falls on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Please stand as we sing our processional hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy name, that we may worthily know you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me as we pray together the collect for this morning. Almighty and ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns.
reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd invite the children to come forward. You could have a seat in the first row there. Now, how many of you get an allowance? Do you get an allowance from your parents? Yes? You get an allowance? Do you get an allowance? No? How about you guys? Do you get an allowance? No. Well, I think you're going to have to have a talk with your parents. <laughs> um, you don't get an allowance for any of the chores you do around the house? No? Well, what happens if you want to go to the store and buy something? What do you buy it with? You don't have any allowance. Anyway, I have a talk <laughs> with mom and dad. Well, I got an allowance when I was a kid. And, uh, and I yet like, used to like to go down to the store at the bottom of the street, little corner store, and get a popsicle or a chocolate bar or something. And often I went, I knew that, well, in those days, a chocolate bar cost 50 cents, okay? And I knew that I had 50 cents of my allowance. And I went down and I went to pay for the chocolate bar with my 50 cents. And you know what? You know what happened? Any ideas? Well, the person at the till said, that'll be 55 cents, please. And I said, but it says it's only 50 cents. And she said, no, it's 55 cents. Do you know what that extra five cents was? Taxes. <laughs> okay. I didn't get a chocolate bar that day. Now, we pay taxes to who? Who do we pay taxes to? Any ideas? The government. And the government needs taxes to pay for all the services that governments provide, like roads and schools and hospitals and things like that. Uh, so we all have to pay taxes. Even you have to pay taxes if you go to spend your allowance. There'll be an extra 7% on top of what, in some places, it's 15%. Okay. Now, uh, we pay our taxes to the government. Now, in the time that Jesus lived, people had to pay taxes back then, too. Okay? Uh, they had to pay taxes to the emperor, the Roman emperor. And the emperor's image appears, appeared on the coins. And whose image appears on our coins? Here, I, I, have, a, I have a toonie. Who's that? Any idea who that is? Uh, no, it's not Jesus. It's been Elizabeth. Now, Queen Elizabeth died a while ago, and King Charles will soon be on there. But the, the king represents our head of state, represents the government. That's who we pay taxes to. Now, back in Jesus' day, people didn't like to pay taxes because they were going to Rome. And Rome was occupying the land that Jesus lived in, and they weren't very nice rulers, so the people didn't like them. Well, one day, Jesus is met by a group of Pharisees, and they were trying to trap Jesus. And they brought out a coin, and they said, uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar? 
And this was a trick question because the Pharisees knew that the people didn't like Caesar. And if Jesus said, yes, you should pay your taxes to Caesar, well, then the people wouldn't like him. But if he said, no, don't pay your taxes to Caesar, then Jesus would be in trouble with the, uh, with the government, with the Roman rulers. Okay? But it was a trick question. There was no right answer. Either way, Jesus was going to get in trouble. So Jesus asked for a coin, and he got the coin, and he said, whose image is that? And they said, Caesar. And Jesus said, well, give to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and give to God that which is God's. Okay? So, what belongs to God? What is God's? Everything is God's. Does uh, God want anything in particular from you guys? Well, I have a magic mirror, and it's going to show you what God wants from you. Okay? So we're each going to look in the mirror. Who's that in the mirror? Me! God wants you. Who's that? God wants you. God wants you. Yeah, God wants you too. Yes, God wants you. And God wants you. That's right. That's what we owe to God. We owe to God ourselves. All that we are and all that we have, we owe to God because God has been so generous to us and given us so many blessings. So what can we give to God? We give ourselves. We do God's work in the world. We love one another. We care for one another. We treat one another with care and compassion. That's what God owes us. And also uh, to parents, uh, God kind of wants a little bit of this back too. Uh, 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 in our offering so that together we can do the work of the church. Together we can carry on God's mission. Shall we stand and say a prayer before you go to Sunday school? Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of these children. May they know that you are always with them. And may they know that they are yours, that they belong to you, and that they give themselves all of themselves to you as they serve you and as they love your people. May it be so. Amen. So off to Sunday school. Our first reading. A reading from Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, 
and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on him. I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I can pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned on the cherub, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them and have punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord, our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord, our God, is the Together, Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, you love what is right. Lead us in your righteousness that we may live to praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in the word only, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we provided to be among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy and inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord shall, has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia, but in, in Achaia, but in every place in your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the, Lord of those, for the people of those re regions reported about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who he rescues us 
from the wrath that what is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we sing our gradual hymn, the prayer of St. Francis. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, you faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to this test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are our emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, who has so made us that we live not by bread alone, but by every word of thine, cause us to hunger after the heavenly food and to find in it your daily provision on the way to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I am starting off on the assumption that each of us is doing 
or choose to do what we are doing in the service of God. As one reads the opening sentences of Exodus, one can sense the tone of concern of Moses. We can sense it in his voice. Moses is frustrated, he's disappointed, he's exhausted, and the third, so he says to God, look, you tell me to bring up these people of Israel, but you do not tell me who will go with me. You say all those nice things about me, and that I am your friend, but then I get stuck in all these horrible situations with the children complaining rebelling and blaming me because what you have given them is not what they were expecting. Moses, after all those years walking with God, is still desperately asking for one more piece of evidence that he is doing the work of God. One might have thought that all the past years would have given Moses immense confidence that he was obeying and acting in harmony with the will of God. Certainly, someone like Moses, who has had all those wonderful and visible experiences, dramatic moments of God's power and presence confirming his leadership and guidance, should he be satisfied with his life? Did God not spare his life in the bushes? Had not God prepared him for leadership while he was in Pharaoh's palace? Did God not speak directly to him in the burning bush? Is this not the Moses who saw the plagues, who passed through the Red Sea, who was led by the pillar of, fright, of fire at night and the cloud by day, who spoke with God on, Saint, on Mount Sinai and was given the Ten Commandments? Is that enough? Is that not enough? My friends, all of us, each of us, have this hunger and this desire to serve and fulfill the will and purpose of God for our lives. Surely, Moses moved with confidence that he was being obedient to the purposes of God. However, we, like Moses, are never sure, completely sure, that we are doing what God intends for us to do. So we implore God, just give us a sign. God, as an individual, we say, just show me your glory. We may not make that comment loudly, but we might say silently, even in our prayers. Show us the way. Show us, O oh God, what we are to do with our lives. How are we to know if what we are doing is God's will for our lives? Although that is our plea, our prayer, yet the story recorded in Scripture is we will never get enough to satisfy the harsh reality of faith in God is that we will never have that deep yearning in the very depth of our heart satisfied. Faith is the essence of living forward. 
in the hope, but never having that hunger satisfied. I read somewhere once that the problem with miracles is that another is needed to authenticate the past one. The hunger for assurance is never satisfied. So what does we do? What does one do? While he or she is doing what he or she think is God's will and in the meantime searching for that assurance. Moses was instructed by God to continue with what he had been doing for most of his life. If you want to know if you are doing God's will, you keep doing what you have been doing in obedience until you get irrefutable evidence that it is time for you to change. When Moses got tired, discouraged, disappointed, and began to wonder if it was worth it, if he should continue, Moses was encouraged to continue to do what had been begun in full and open confidence that it was the work and purpose of God. In all my study and my readings, I have assured that God does not change his mind or purpose for us every week. Perseverance is a characteristic a characteristic of the saints when we get tired or disappointed. God is more often to be found in the continuing than in the changing places. There is also the mark of the will and purpose of God evident in one's hesitancy to do something. Moses did not want to be the leader of the children of Israel Sure, he saw the need. Sure, he knew he had the training. Certainly, he could do it. Certainly, he could do it because he had the training and he had the need. But Moses said to send someone else. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane did not want to continue with his work. Perhaps one could put it this way, the choice that is the least attractive to us, to you and to me, and to those around us, has the greater possibility of being the direction that God desires us to go. One might, one night, sorry, one night, a little boy was asked by his mother, to go outside into the yard and to pick his toys away. Put his toys away out of changing, out of damage and so on. The little boy started to go outside, but once he was outside, he quickly went back inside. He said to his mother, I am afraid of the dark. Won't you come out with me? His mother reminded him that he wasn't really by himself, that Jesus was always with him and would never abandon him. With that, the boy went out again. But no sooner had he gone again than he returned, saying that he was still afraid of the dark. When his mother reminded him that Jesus was with him and that he was not by himself, the little fellow said that he said that, but that, the little fellow said that, but that. Sometime I need somebody with skin on on, with skin on his self. My friends, <laughs> when I read that, I did exactly what I did. I had to laugh myself. My friends, this worry of Moses, which seems to punctuate the first reading from Exodus, speaks to us of the weakness of human faith 
and the constant expectation of evidence of God's presence in our lives. Even Moses wants a public unique assurance. We, like the little boy, wants to see the skin of God. Moses teaches us about the disappointments we are to experience in our relationship with God. Moses teaches us that the humility that is a part of following a call from God, Moses teaches us about both the distance between God and God's people, but also about the intimacy that is lived in, out in power. He also exemplifies our human desire to have first-hand knowledge of the Almighty God being on our side and conquering all the misery and evil around us so that we can rest in peace. Moses, of course, is not unique in his desire to have something more to hang on to. All of us, all of us need reassurance. We need assurance from time to time in our faith, in our journey, in our coming to church often, especially during the dark and difficult times that God has not left us to our resources. We may sense the something of God, yet something remains withheld. A similar point is made in the early 19th century hymn which is our common prayer, is number 52, I think it is. This Eucharistic hymn mentions the Exodus themes of the streams that through the desert flow the manna from above. On this basic opening words, can we, <coughs> excuse me, can be heard as a reminder of how Moses was told by God, no one shall see me and live. Stories like this one from Exodus reminds us of the two dimensions of the Old Testament portrayals of God. God communicates with people on a personal level. Human beings can expect to live in the tension of being in a personal relationship with their God, and yet never yet as close as they may like. Simply put, one cannot see God and live. Not even Moses. My dear brothers and sisters, I have spoken to you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to kneel or sit as you are able for the prayers of the people. Lord God. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. To justice, freedom, and peace. of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. Especially remembering those 
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and, and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we can Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace.
please join me as we say together the prayer over the gifts. Eternal God, your word inspires our faith. May we who offer you our praise trust you in all things. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your children, for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, and in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days he sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray.
creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may the church be gathered and of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. For those of you requiring a gluten-free host, you may receive that from Deacon Betty. available in the chapel for anyone desiring individual prayers.
Please join me as we pray together the prayer after communion. God of peace, you have nourished us in this sacrament with the body and blood of Christ. May we who have taken holy things keep faith in our hearts and lives. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to everyone who is here joining us today, both in person and online. It is a blessing, a joy to have you with us. And those who are here in person, uh, please join us for refreshments following the service. Uh, our October food drive continues, and it's for students uh, at St. Mary's University. Uh, and next Sunday, a reminder, is Food for Others Sunday. Next Saturday is Fall Cleanup Saturday. Uh, from 9 to 2 a.m., or 9, 2 a.m., <laughs> uh, 9 to 2 p.m., rather, uh, lunch will be provided. Uh, come and help out for as long as you are able. Uh, there'll be both yard, outdoor cleanup, and indoor cleanup as well. Our next Pioneer of Paul event with our youth, youth is November 4th, between 4.15 and 8.15. Um, please sign up on the wait list uh, if you, pardon me, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I need my glasses. Um, and Doreen has an announcement. I'm sure we're all horrified at hearing about the bomb that landed beside the Al Ali hospital in Gaza. So I just wanted to let you know that this is a hospital that PWRDF has been supporting for quite some years. And when the war broke out and they obviously needed to ramp up their services, they approved an initial loan of $30,000, which I hope went through. They said it was being transferred just on the day that the bomb dropped. So we hope for the best. And obviously they need everything at the hospital from medication to water and simple things like that. So PWRDF has launched a special appeal in support of that. You can go to the website and contribute that way or through your envelopes here at St. Paul's. But obviously the need is very great and I thought I might just bring it to your notice this morning because it's obviously, we have connections with Israel through the Diocese of Jerusalem, etc., etc. But you may not be as aware that, you know, PWRDF works in Gaza as well to support the Palestinians. So I recommend that to your consideration, please. Thank you, Doreen. Uh, when I was in Israel and Jerusalem in June, I got to witness firsthand uh, the work that the Diocese of Jerusalem in the Middle East does in healthcare and in education in Gaza, in the West Bank, and in Israel itself. And it is not just work that is limited to Palestinian Anglicans or Christians. It is work that serves the whole community and makes a huge difference in those communities and a huge difference in building bridges between Christians and Muslims and with the Jewish community as well. Uh, there is a 
a special appeal that the Diocese of Jerusalem in the Middle East has launched. Uh, you can give to that appeal either through PDRF or directly to the diocese. Um, a number of people that I had the opportunity to meet have been interviewed in recent days about the situation, uh, so that certainly made it very real to me, actually knowing some of the clergy, some of the doctors, some of the teachers who are dealing with this unfathomable crisis and tragedy that is unfolding in the Holy Land. At the very least, keep the people of the Holy Land in your prayers. They need them now uh, more than ever, ever. And keep the Diocese of Jerusalem and the Middle East in your prayers and their bishop, who is a lovely man, a lovely Palestinian Christian. Um, so I'll leave that to you, commend that to you, uh, with you. Are, are, are there any other announcements? The last one. Yes. Just a reminder that next weekend is the men's Castillo weekend, and the following weekend is for the women. If anybody is interested in attending those, we need to register now, and you can see me or the person at your church. Having been invited to speak at a Crucio event that was held um, last year here at St. Paul's, uh, I can tell you that it's a very powerful, a very moving experience that, that very much deepens your faith. So, so think about it seriously. And Betty has an announcement that I've forgotten. Yeah. Morning prayer on Wednesday. Morning prayer will be held on Wednesday at? 9.30. At 9.30. Uh, our closing hymn, Fight the Good Fight with All Thy Might. Confirmation classes begin next Sunday following the service. No, during the service. <laughs> it is during the service. Okay. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be 